this heifer calf right here if you look at its ears they're not even flat they're hanging down There she goes. We gave it some LA 300. It's an antibiotic, and then also something called Prevail. It's pretty much like a like an ibuprofen almost, banamine. Should be getting better. So of course that calf is out of the pen of the freshly weaned calves. Those weaned calves tend to get sick, and so we're watching them close. That's the first one we've treated so far. It was a heifer. Just drooping ears a little bit. Didn't seem like it was coughing much or, you know, real lethargic and slow, but we definitely want to treat them as soon as we see them because those younger calves, they can go downhill real fast. Anyway, we're going to be harvesting corn today. We got to get an auger set up, get the grain cart to the field, see how many acres we can punch out. Right here, we got us some airless tires. Been looking all over for them. They're like impossible to find for some reason. I actually had to go on the dark web to find them. It was in the cart right next to uh, Hitman and then airless tires for an auger swingway. Doesn't make sense to me. Hitman on the dark web. You don't know about the dark web? Me neither. And these airless tires are really awesome. These ones that take air, if you don't get enough in them, they just come off the bead. And if you get too much in them, they just blow out. And then they rot all summer. Sitting in the sun, too. I hear Uncle Jeff just starting to semi down there. Seems like we're ready to go. That seems to be leaning a little, but we're in the bin nonetheless. Got our new fancy tires on there. Harvest some kern. If you look at some of these old ones, just blew out. It's terrible. So today we're also getting to try out our new purchase. We got these Yield 360 uh, gathering chains on here. We got them through a local egg store, agronomy store, Egg Tagra, and they actually have a guy that helped us put them on. And so he did a really great job. We appreciate that. That keeps from butt shelling. And also, as you can see, there's a bunch of kernels sitting up there. So even if you do have butt shelling, it still hopefully gets into the combine. The other thing is, we got some Lancota stock stompers on here. See our front tires, they actually run right down the row, so we're not too worried about them, but it's the back tire that often fits right in the back. That's Its track is right in between these two tires. And so that's gonna be pushing stocks down and uh, keeping us from wearing out those tires. This machine's all greased up, ready to go. He's gonna head to the north. This field we're in is right close to home. Those trees down there is where home is. You can see the ground's pretty bare right there. This is where we had a bunch of silage chopped off of about 30 acres all the way around the field. When we get to manure spreading, 
when we're done with harvest, that's pretty much the next thing on the list is spreading manure and putting in some new fence. We're gonna be spreading all that manure on the outside of this field because we took a lot of nutrients off when we chopped that silage and we're gonna put a lot back on. And it'll be really easy for me to see where we chopped the silage versus where we cut corn like normal. There's some blue over there. We have a little chance of rain just like in the next hour. You're kidding. Dad was laughing and pointing at me. I drove underneath to, to dump and the thing was tarped. Well, this was sitting in the shed, so I don't know why it'd be tarped. Give this another try. Truck one of the day. Not seeing any waste at all. Concave clearance is shut plenty. We're taking some chunks out of these. I haven't seen a single kernel on the ground. That's incredible. Okay, I take that back. I've seen one. Oh, there's two and three. Anyway, it seems like our settings are dialed in quite well. It's lunchtime, folks. Heading over to Storla Station. Storla Station? Picking up a hitchhiker over here. Here's the sauce for your sandwiches. Bring it on. Yeah. Storla Station. I like a nice cloudy day of harvest. It's a good feeling, but also you don't have the sun shining in on a box with windows just heating it up. Hey Cole. Yeah. Today's song of the day is Steeler's Wheel Stuck in the Middle with You. Have a listen, will ya? Here you go. It's pretty good looking corn. We got a 
big old ditch run through this field. Gotta be careful. Don't want to break stuff. Learn something on a different YouTube channel. They always keep dry erase markers in their cabs and they're able to make notes. That's that's really nice. You know, it comes right off. But it's a good way to write something down temporarily. I just use it to keep track of how much I have in these semis and how much more I need to put in there. back of his pickup full of corn. Yeah, fill her up. He says do her. Here we go. That ditch right there is super steep. You guys just gotta inch through it. Try not to run the header into the ground and try to keep it so it's gathering all the corn. So those ditches were never very bad until like 2019 we had above average moisture. Just like three years ago it was super wet around here and just all this water rushing cut really deep ditches. Now it drains well but we gotta we gotta drive through some some steep ditches. So our feed guy Leroy he's in the tractor with dad just riding for a round and he borrowed our post hole digger, so we're going to head back up in the yard and unload that for him. Just after I fill his tailgate full of corn. We got 80 acres done, there's another 64 left, it's going to take us about 4 more hours and it's about 5 o'clock. Our calves at home do need uh, another bale so we'll have to get that done today. This field is one of our hilliest, which is nothing that hilly, you know, we're pretty flat around here. But down in those low spots we'll hit 160 bushel some pretty fancy stuff and then we'll get on a hill and we'll hit about anything from 90 to 110 so yeah a couple more two inch rains would have made pretty good it would have been a great year if we would have got two more two inch rains i just realized that even though it says we have about 60 acres left 
we had them chop the end rows, which was about 30 acres. So we only have about 30 acres left. I got demoted. That blue has just been sitting there and sitting there. That could mean my pasture out west has just been getting rain all day, but I doubt it. You know, you don't usually want rain in the middle of harvest, but we'll take anything we can get. Been a lot of semis on this road today. Oh yeah, I totally did that. Well, we finally got moisture. By golly, the drought's over. We got four drops on the windshield, so small the camera can't even see them. If that keeps rolling in, we could maybe get six drops. Take a look at the old phone here. We got some big yellow coming. Big yellow. Dad texted said we should be quitting soon. We're gonna quit before we have to get soaked. So this last dump will fill this last truck. Last truck of the day. It's starting to sprinkle and you can really feel that it cooled down. What you been up to, doggy? How you doing, girl? Here's the cow that's got that got real skinny out on pasture. We assume she got hardware disease. Seems like she's moving faster, eating faster, but she hasn't really put on much weight. So we'll keep feeding her and see if she gets any better. She's a big fan of the perlet. So now there's about 15 loads of corn in that grain bin. About half full. I see. Yeah. And if it keeps raining. We'll be working cattle, weaning cattle tomorrow. Will the corn be better if it rains now? No. So we either get the combine corn or work cattle, huh? Yeah. Alright. Sounds like a day. Alright. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. Have a good one. Have a good one. Have a good one. Have a good one. Ellie, we better get to higher ground. There's a monsoon coming. Save yourself.